Okay, we're going to do a fairly quick analysis just to show the basic idea and then perhaps we'll do another one later um, where we'll make things a little bit more sophisticated. But for now we'll just do a file import and we'll import the geometry that we've worked on in Key Creator. Uh, and there we go. So this is what we've seen in Key Creator. It's colour coded. The yellow are going to be is going to be an internal pressure. The purple, or pink, or however it comes out um, on your screen is uh, where we're going to put symmetry. And um, that's about it, really. So at the moment we've got geometry that comprises of three parts. Let's just check that. If we go into the geometry tab and maybe turn off the body, so you can see there are two bits there with the red circles we've previously defined. In this case I'm just going to glue the parts together a little bit cruder than previous e examples. So what I'm going to do is just glue the two end caps to the body along the the, the face rather than doing it at the bolt holes which I perhaps will do later a bit more sophisticated um, right so what we might do is just create some groups of the coloured bits which will perhaps help us later on so under groups we'll just say new and uh, we'll create a group called maybe uh, restraint and under that we'll just say group we want to group some surfaces by colour and just pick one of these coloured surfaces, only one, and FEMAP will group all surfaces with that colour. Just to show you that, if I say show active group, there you go. So I can use that later on. Uh, back to show format, let's do it again. Uh, we'll create a new group, maybe call this one pressure. and um, same sort of thing group surface by color we'll just pick one of those yellow things and that's it so we just show active group and there's we're going to use that to sort of pressurize the model okay let's show the full model again so what we're going to do is glue these bits together to make them a, a single FE model and we'll do that using the automatic tools. So under this connections thing here, if we right click we can use automatic connections and it says select solids to detect connections. Well we want all solids and what we'll do is it's going to look to see how close surfaces are that kind of thing but we're just we're just going to say yeah okay that's good enough to get on with it. Um, and that's done it. Uh, it's pretty quick but just to prove what it's done let's have a look at it. So under the connections now it's created a whole stack of stuff so under connections the main thing it's got a couple of regions so if we look at this first one and say show master as they can see that yellow back face and the associated slave with that is that bit which is correct and then we'll show master other end it's actually reversed it around isn't it and show slave not that'll matter okay that's it so that's created the contacts between the two models so now what we need to do is apply some restraints that's uh, now bear in mind we haven't even meshed this model yet we don't have to mesh it until later on or we can mesh it straight away it really doesn't matter so we'll do model constrain surfaces give the constraint set a name, let's call it CS1 and it says ok pick surfaces so we could go around and pick all the surfaces but we've already grouped them haven't we so we'll say by group, let's just move that up a bit so you can see it by group, what do we call it, restraint ok let's pick them all and we want to be symmetric about the Z so we want TZ and in fact RXY but TZ is the key one. So that's created that restraint. And that's it. Now we need to do um, 
X and Y restraints as well to keep this uh, fully restrained. So we'll do, uh, let's see, we'll do a model constrain on a point this time, or we'll maybe pick that point and that point, and we'll have X constraints, vertical constraints, basically, which will stop the rotation. And then we'll just pick another point there, and we'll restrain that in Y, just so that the thing is fully constrained with sort of minimal kind of constraints. So that's our constraints done. Let's load it. Model load on surface. We'll call it load case one. And it'll ask us for the surfaces. And again, we've already created a group of this, haven't we? Call it pressure. And uh, what's the pressure value? It's one newton per square millimeter in this case, or ten bar. Go, and there you go. Little arrows showing you the pressures pointing. To need to blow this thing up, expand it. So that's about it. We haven't got an FE model yet, so we'll do that now. We'll just by very crudely setting a default size of five millimeters. I know that's about right for this model and then we'll just say mesh geometry solids which solids well it's all solids once the material we'll make it out of steel just we can change all this later 210 one two three that's uh, steel Poisson's ratio 0.3 that's all we need to do for a basic linear static analysis auto meshing parameters well we'll just go with all the defaults and it'll just mesh it and there we go so that's a tetrahedral mesh ten noded tet parabolic tet model that's pretty much ready to rock um, we'll just go now and set up a new analysis type we'll call it say new we'll call it analysis one now Y sys something like that one that'll do, and because it's you know there's nothing much more to do it sets it all up so we'll just say analyze and uh, hopefully it will solve. There's a um, tab here, so this is a bit of a log of what's going on. So it'll take a. I'm not going to edit it. We'll leave it going in real time. Don't know how long it's going to take to run. This is a fairly basic crude machine. It's just a cheap ish laptop so not the kind of thing you'd normally be run models on I'm waiting to see the sparse matrix solver graph the little thing will appear around about here and then it'll, that's when it actually starts solving the equations at the moment it's just setting up the solve um, generating the FE deck and solving it in Nastran as it happens NX Nastran here we go, sparse matrix solvers, tick that, so it's going to solve 100 and what's that say? 12,000, is that 12? Yeah, 12,000 equations roughly, which is a lot of equations, but it's actually quite a small model. So when this graph here meets the red line, it, it will have solved all the equations and it's pretty much done the problem. So. Um, yeah, that could take anything from a few seconds to hours, depending on what you're doing, really. But this is quite a simple problem. So it's pretty much there. And when it's done that, it'll then read the results back into FEMA. We can have a look at the stresses, and we'll just generate a very quick plot, and then that'll be it. Okay, so it's completed that. Let's go back to the log file to see what it says. And it says, Nastran job finished, so I'll come back into FEMA. Clean up of output set is complete. It's finished basically. So if I'll just I'll just turn off Control Q, turn everything off, and just look at the elements. So there we go. And I tend to turn off the mesh as well, which is done under here. We'll turn off the filled edges right now. Let's look at the deflected shape. There you go. That looks about right. And then we'll put some results on it. Okay, so there we go. You can see the glue's working, it's obviously sticking together. And um, 
that's about it very very simple crude analysis obviously there's a lot more to it than I've shown but it just gives you an idea as to this kind of thing you can do and how quickly you can do it when you've got the right tools okay thanks